Hello everybody. Mark and Colleen Berry here for Food for Thought for Breadbasket Ministries. Once again, here we are. Um, it's been a wonderful day at Breadbasket. Mm -hmm. Just had a wonderful service here today. And uh, by the video, you'll see that we did it outdoors. We're still struggling with the, the protocols and the, all the things about keeping people social distanced and all that kind of stuff. And I know you know all about that. So, but anyway, we had a great time. It was wonderful. I was really impressed with the, uh, the clients and how much they really look forward to the service today. That was fun. You know, it was remarkable. Before we uh, chose to actually have a service, uh, we did some surveying and asked uh, the clients if they were ready to get back to it. And every one of them just with a resounding yes and amen. So you're absolutely right. It was the right thing to do, and I think the right time to do it. Absolutely. Well, we had a very fun and very exciting uh, message today, and that's what we want to talk about. Um, the, the message, pardon me, the message came from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 5, out of the NIV, and it says, And when he went along, Jesus, he saw a man blind from birth, his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now Jesus replies, he says, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in his life. And we'll stop there for now. Uh, you know, Colleen, the other morning we were uh, had, having our coffee and uh, I opened my Bible to this verse and that verse where it says this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in his life just kind of jumped out mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just thinking about how important is that that we would understand that God really wants to rewrite our stories so that his works can be displayed in our life. Yeah, and I think it goes to his heart as a good father because good fathers want to share with their children their wisdom, their knowledge, their knowing. And God has to navigate both good and evil. And he wants us to be just as wise and shrewd and cunning. And it's through his works that we gain that wisdom. And we also get to glorify him, but we get the benefit as much as he does, I believe. Yeah. Well, let's think about this. I mean, <clears throat> most of us, myself included, we struggle with things in our life you know, we're, we're just trying to get through life. We're just mm -hmm. trying to survive in life. And yet God is saying this uh, from this passage, the things that exist in your life are there to be overcome. And it's not just us overcoming, but it's so that his works and his work can be displayed in our life. And to me, that is what really is very important that we look back on our life, we look back on our history Mm -hmm. And we can see a, a time where we were going through something and uh, we were, maybe we had a way in our life that wasn't good. Um, some, some change that the Lord made that changed your destiny, that changed your story once and for all. And um, these are his works that he puts in our lives, that he works in our lives so that they might be there uh, displayed in our life. You know what's so cool is um, there's the old saying to create a win-win situation. Mm. And I have found that over and over and over again, whenever God is displaying his works, taking my blindness, whether it be spiritual or even in the natural world, something I'm not seeing real clearly, um, he wants to turn it into a win-win. And mm -hmm. Every time he's done that, it's been a win for him because you're right, his works get displayed and then he gets the glory. But then I get the win because I get to live in his ways and in his, uh, his truth. And it just is such a gift. Absolutely. For sure. Um, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his handiwork, or we are his workmanship. Uh, another translation says, Created in Christ Jesus to do good works that God prepared in advance for us to do. Um, I was thinking today about how um, I would not do or would have ever wanted to do the things that I do had it been not for his work in my life first. His work comes first 
and then our work comes second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you get that one backwards, you pay for it dearly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You don't get out ahead of God. It is a, sure that is a fatal mistake. Every for time sure. I've done it, I, I find myself um, in a place or in a story that I really don't want to be in. And, and then oftentimes I'm not sure how to get out of it. But in my own strength, I can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. I need his wisdom. I need his strength. And I need his works to sure. transform my truth. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Um, once again, we don't work first. It's our, our works are our response to his, um, to his work in us first. And um, that is so important also, uh, Colleen, because I've seen people in ministry that were doing things in such a way that you knew it wasn't of God, it was of the flesh. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, it's very important that God do a work in us that his work be done his way. You know, it reminded me of a word that I was given years and years ago, back in 1998. In fact, I just revisited that word recently. And um, one of the statements that was made in it was that I could get distracted by a lot of goodly things when in reality I needed to keep my focus on godly things. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't that the distinction? Because even in ministry, you're doing good in doing ministry, but... Are you doing the godly things? Yeah. And the other thing, too, is that um, God doesn't really need us to do anything no. for him. Um, <clears throat> what really needs to happen is he, he does want us to serve and, and to, uh, to preach the gospel. But before he does that, and before we do that, he must do a work in us so that we really represent him well, that we represent his name well. Um, you know, we don't even have to go into any examples in history, in church history, of how um, men who started out well ended up actually bringing disgrace mm. to his name. And so um, it's very important that we do things his way and that his work be done in us first. And then he can do his best work when he does his work in us first. It reminds me of the blind guy. We'll go back to our, mm -hmm. our blind guy yep. in the passage who couldn't see, and it got me thinking, you know, when somebody can't see well, we have a friend who's struggling mm -hmm. with that, they learn to listen exceedingly well. Yeah. They have other senses that get really heightened and advanced. And so here is this gentleman who has lived his entire life blind, but he sharpened other skills and now God is going to lift the veil and give him his sight as well. And you had mentioned how awestruck he must have been. Yeah, uh, to be born blind, never see the light of day. And um, suddenly he can see everything. It must have been a shock, uh, but great joy also. Absolutely. Okay, well, listen, um, it's uh, always a pleasure uh, to come to you and uh, to have a minute or two with you. Um, Thank you for uh, giving us a listen. Uh, I, I, I hope that this uh, plants a seed in you to maybe think about uh, your life and what the, the Lord wants to do in your life and is doing in your life. And um, that one of his great motives uh, for working in our life is so that his works can be displayed in human flesh in people, uh, broken people like us, and, uh, and that God's glory can be seen. And so it's... Um, really a wonderful thing and uh, uh, wonderful to be the recipient of that work and to be something that he cares about uh, that he can uh, do something wonderful in. I'd like to add too mm -hmm. that it's important for us as believers to consider the ways that our friends and family don't see and sometimes we want to take that personally we want to be frustrated by it but it may be that God is letting you see their life. And like Jesus, you can say, okay, I recognize they can't see, 
but there's a work of God that needs to be done here. Mm. And you and I have talked about assignments in past videos and the idea that anybody's close to you, they become your assignment, that God wants you to pray mm -hmm. for them. He wants you to see them through his eyes. He wants you to seek him and know his path for them. And if you can see a way that someone cannot, maybe that's an opportunity for you to pray for them, speak into their life, begin to bless them in ways that help give them sight towards the good things of God. Amen, well said, Thank okay. You. Okay, well, Lord bless you. Until next time, God bless. Have a great day. Bye.